Hello students, I am Dr. Archana Sharan, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Bilai Mahila Mahavidyalay. I am back again with uh, a new topic from Paper One for MHC Fourth Sem, Paper One, Nuclear and Particle Physics, uh, Unit Four, that is Nuclear Models. The topic for discussion today is the Bohr-Wheeler theory. And uh, how we'll be calculating the fissionability parameter using the Bohr-Wheeler theory. Let me just give you a brief introduction about the Bohr-Wheeler theory. In the year 1939, Bohr and Wheeler had considered the nucleus as analogous to a charged liquid drop. And the nuclear forces were compared with the surface tension force of a liquid. The nuclear shape represents a balance between the short range attractive forces and the Coulomb repulsive forces. When U-235 is excited by the capture of a thermal neutron, then the nuclear surface oscillations are set up in the liquid, like matter, which distorts it from its original shape. The Coulomb energy further attempts to deform the drop even more. And if the excitation energy is very high, the Coulomb energy can overcome the surface energy and hence the nucleus separates into two or more intermediate masses. If the fission does not occur, the excitation carbon nitrogen cycle emits either gamma rays or the neutron and returns to a stable shape. Here, the nucleus is considered as uniformly charged drop of constant density with well-defined and incompressible surface. And thus, the total volume of the drop remains constant and the oscillations of the excited nucleus deforms the surface only. The drop is deformed from the spherical shape in such a way that it retains an axis of symmetry the axis of symmetry ki jab hum baat kar rahe hai, it's ka matlab ye hota hai, the polar axis of the spherical coordinates polar, polar coordinates mein jab aapke aate hai, are theta and phi uh, the theory of the nuclear fission was carried out and uh, the two scientists Bohr and Wheeler they applied a simple form of analysis to express the radius capital R which is making an angle theta with the axis of maximum deformation and they expressed it in terms of the legendar polynomial as under that is R theta is equal to R naught into 1 plus summation L is equal to 0 to infinity alpha L P L cos theta where R0 is the radius of the undeformed spherical drop, alpha L is the deformation parameter, and PL cos theta is the Legendre polynomial. Now the requirement of the constant volume imposes the condition that the center of the mass of the drop, it has to remain unchanged. But the center of mass is level pe change nahi hona chahiye. To uske liye jo condition tha, that was alpha naught is equal to zero and alpha one is equal to zero. And hence, we substitute these two values in equation one. Thus, we get the final equation as r theta is equal to r naught into one plus alpha two p two plus alpha three p three plus alpha four p four and so on. The surface energy of the spherical drop is ESO into T into 4 pi R naught square, where 4 pi R naught square is the surface area of the drop and capital T is the surface tension. Now first we calculate the surface energy of a deformed drop. The surface energy of the deformed drop is given by es is equal to integral tau into integral ds now from here we can see So 
So here we are getting the Coulomb energy of the spherical nucleus as EC0 is equal to 1 by 2 integral VI rho d cube r, where capital V is the Coulomb potential, rho is the charge density. Now we calculate the Coulomb energy of the deformed nucleus as given below. EC is equal to 1 by 2 integral V0 plus dV0 into rho naught plus d rho naught d cube r. Solving it further, we get 1 by 2 integral v2 rho naught d cube r plus 1 by 2 integral v naught d rho d cube r plus rho naught dv d cube r plus 1 by 2 rho v d rho d cube r. Now let us assume that 1 by 2 integral v naught del rho d cube r and 1 by 2 integral rho naught del v del cube r are so are very similar hence the above equation can be written as ec is equal to 1 by 2 integral v naught rho naught d cube r plus integral v naught del rho d cube r plus integral 1 by 2 del v del rho d cube r this equation is number 7. So the first term in the equation 7 is 1 by 2 integral v naught rho naught d cube r which is equal to 3 by 5 z e whole square upon r naught. The second term in the equation 7 is v naught integral v naught del rho d cube r is equal to minus 3 by 8 pi z e whole square upon r naught into alpha 2 square plus alpha 3 square plus so and the third term in the equation 7 is 1 by 2 integral del v del rho d cube r is equal to 9 by 8 pi z e square upon r naught into summation l is equal to 2 infinity to infinity l upon 2l plus 1 mod of alpha 1 whole square. So the total deformed Coulomb energy is hence given by EC is equal to 3 by 5 into Z e ka whole square upon R naught into 1 plus 1 by 5 alpha 2 square minus 10 by 49 alpha 3 cube plus so on. And this is the equation let Thus, the total energy of the nucleus is given by the sum of surface tension energy is Coulomb energy. For spherical, ETO is equal to ESO plus ECO. And for the Coulomb energy, ET is equal to ES plus EC. Hence, the change in the energy is given by delta E is equal to ET minus ETO, which can be further written as delta E is equal to, in place of ET, we can write it as ES plus EC, and in place of ETO, we write it as ESO plus ECO. So the total deformed energy is the sum of equation 4 and equation 1 and hence we express it as ETO is equal to ESO into 1 plus 2 by 5 alpha 2 square plus 5 by 7 alpha 3 q and so on plus ECO 1 plus 1 by 5 alpha 2 square minus 10 by 49 alpha q plus so on. From the above equation, we neglect the higher terms like alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5 and so on. And hence, finally, we get the expression for delta E, that is the change in the energy as delta E is equal to 1 by 5 alpha 2 square into 2 ESO minus ECO. Now, the condition of the stability of the nucleus is the surface energy appears with a positive sign and the Coulomb energy with a negative sign. The stability of the nucleus against the spontaneous fission depends on delta E. That is when it is positive or negative, 
the, the what will be the nucleus condition it is described as below when delta e is positive that is eco is less than 2 eso then the nucleus is stable <coughs> Whereas when delta E is negative, that is ECO is greater than 2 ESO, then the nucleus is unstable. We get an unstable nucleus. The critical condition becomes when 2 ESO is equal to ECO. In that condition, what we get, we solve it further and we get it as z square by a critical is approximately equal to 40 pi r naught cube into capital t upon e square or it is approximately equal to 50 hence we define the fissionability parameter as chi is equal to z square upon capital a upon z square by capital a critical and we have the following cases we arrive at the following conclusion that if chi is less than one then <clears throat> the nucleus is stable against the spontaneous fission and if chi is greater than one then there is no fission that is the nucleus is unstable with this we come to the end of the uh, un topic two of unit Four. Hope you find it helpful for your study. Till the next topic. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching the video.